here are the Days of Horror YouTube channel. We've covered quite a few varied topics, ranging from murders, to suicide, to UFOs, to the paranormal. Today, we're gonna to cover a quite bizarre death. This, my friends, is the tale of 66-year-old Henry Entwistle. Now, my friends, we have visited St. Thomas's Churchyard for another video, and I'll put the links down below for that. But this is the second time we have now visited it, and it is here on our doorstep here in Helmshore. But the story itself is a bizarre one. And it is the sad tale of Henry Entwistle, like we said at the beginning, who was 66 years old, when he was sadly found lifeless, lying naked on the kitchen floor of his cottage at nearby Bridge End. The manner of his death is which or what makes this tale today truly bizarre. Now today's story is going to be an extremely short one. We are covering the tale of Henry and how he was found sadly passed away in his uh, cottage over at Bridge End, which is literally a two minute walk away. Information in the local archives is extremely limited. Now, we have been speaking to the vicar of St Thomas, a, a chap called David, a nice chap. And like I said, he came out with uh, with a map and he showed us roughly where the location is and Henry's is just, just in this direction. But like I said, his information on Henry at Whistle, now he died, is extremely limited. So this video, like I said, it, it's going to be a matter of minutes, 10 minutes perhaps, but hopefully you'll find it interesting. But while we're here, we are going to walk around and take in some of these other headstones um, because we are going to cover a lot more of these stories next year when the weather starts to get a little bit better again. Um, but yeah, this is St Thomas's. This is in Helmshore in our neck of the woods. And the reason why we're out basically today filming this one is simply because we've got no car. Now, we've got a load of stories further afield over in Manchester and Altrincham Way, which we're going to go to shortly, but uh, for today and for this weekend, we've got no car, so we thought we'd have a walk down. It's not raining, we thought we'd just cover this short story of Henry. Now, here at St Thomas's Churchyard, there are quite a few headstones of interest, and ones which myself and Vicky are going to look into in more detail at a later date. We do have some famous-ish interments here. And when I say famous-ish, I'm talking about people who made Helmshaw what it is today. We've got the factory, the mill owners. Uh, we've got people such as this, Samuel Story Stott. And this is the wife at this side, but Samuel's also buried here. And he was uh, a major player here in Helmshaw back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So people such as the Stott family, we will cover their story at some point. But you've also got a lot of headstones, and I mentioned this in a previous video, such as this one, which is hidden away. And these headstones simply have initials. One or two have headstone numbers as well as initials such as this. And I think that says AD and number 220 possibly, but no names, no dates, nothing else. But you've got these ones dotted all around the place, such as down there, just got one behind me. Furthering that them distances over there. These headstones are dotted around all over this graveyard. So again, stories for another day. But yeah, St Thomas is here in Elmshore. We always seem to come at this time of year as well when the leaves are falling and you see the golden browns on the floor and it gives it that little bit more atmospheric vibe to it. Now where we are 
today at St Thomas's. This church was originally built or the foundation stone was laid around 1850 and the church I think was formally opened a year later in 1851 and we are going to be covering the story of St Thomas's in a later video probably next year because apparently there's an 180th or something like that there's an anniversary of when the parish was opened so we are going to be covering that story like I said next year today's story like I said, it has brought us back here to St Thomas's and to the story of Henry Whistle. And we have been talking to the vicar, uh, a nice chap called David, and he's come out with a map to show us the actual plots of where these headstones are. And we are looking for grave or headstone number 361. Now, fortunately, he's also given us the names of several other members who were buried in that same plot of land, apart from Henry. Um, we'll go through the names when we find it, hopefully we'll find it um, because like I said this story took place in 1890 so many years have uh, obviously since passed, well over 100 years We asked for Henry Entwistle, 66 year old man who lived alone Now the 24 hours leading up to his death nobody had seen him or heard from him and back in the 1800s, back in those days from all accounts or from what we've read neighbours knew each other well and neighbours were soon quick to knock on doors and shut through windows if, say, you hadn't been seen. And in Henry's case, it was no different. He, he hadn't been seen since, I think, it was the Tuesday or the Monday or the Tuesday prior to his death. So several neighbours had gone round. Two, two, two neighbours had gone round and they knocked on his door and didn't get an answer. Anyway, they made their way around to, I think it was the back kitchen, where they found... Henry's lifeless body lying naked on the floor, like I said, in the kitchen. Now this, we feel, is the final resting place of Henry Entwistle. As you can see, it's weathered quite badly and his name is missing. But there is an Entwistle. Now we do know that a Richard, as well as a Peggy and another person, is interred here with Henry. And if you see, or look closely, there is a Richard, indeed, buried, along with an ant whistle, in this wife, grave. And it does say wife of Richard, so you know there's a female as well. Yeah, and there is a wife, wife of Richard, wife of Richard, wife of Richard. But we know that, we've got 99% certain that this is... Henry Entwistle's final resting place. Because David said it's a family grave. And David did clarify it was a family grave, as Vicky's just said. So this, my friends, is the final resting place of poor Henry. So what makes Henry's story quite bizarre and the way he died, the two neighbours found poor Henry lying, like I said, naked on the kitchen floor. He was lifeless. But when they burst through the door and went to try to pick him up and hopefully make sure he was okay, they found him lying lifeless with a cast iron pan or a pot up to the bridge of his nose. Somehow Henry had either slipped and fallen and he'd caught his head inside this pan or this, this iron pot or he'd placed it over the head himself. Now there is another alternative, one could argue, in that somebody else may have been in the house at the time, perhaps um, they may have robbed him, they may have put this pan over his head to make an escape. There's a lot of theories as to how Henry ended up with this cast iron pot on his head. Now unfortunately, when the two neighbours made their way into the house, like I said, they went to his aid as quick as they could. It was quickly obvious to them that Henry was indeed dead. It would take the authorities, the police arrived, and they had to smash this pot, this iron, off of Henry's head. Now, the autopsy or the post-mortem would indicate that poor Henry had died of contusions and some form of brain hemorrhage. Basically, his skull had fractured in several places, leading obviously to, to brain damage and blood clots. And this is what led to Henry's death. 
I can only imagine it would have been an excruciating, painful way to go. Unless, obviously, Henry, if he has fallen and he's caught his head inside the pan and it's knocked him unconscious whilst on the floor, none of us will ever, ever know that. But it is truly bizarre how Henry's death came about because of a cast iron or a cast iron pot that was found fastened tightly, like I said, over his head up to the bridge of his nose. Really is a bizarre, a bizarre way to die. So in front is St Thomas's Church, and like I said, work began on this place back, I think it was in 1850, with a foundation stone being laid somewhere. We're not quite sure where that foundation stone is, but from all accounts, under that foundation stone, you have got coins, you've got an old newspaper, and you've got other time periods, if you will. It is, a, it is, it is literally a time capsule. But where that foundry stone is, even David himself is unsure. Now I had a look last year to try and find it, but it could well have sunken a little bit into the ground after all these years. Now this, this church, like I said, it was opened officially in 1851 and we are going to cover the story of how and why this amazing church was built. And like I said, on the day of the opening itself. And we'll cover that story at a later date. Now this side of St Thomas's and where Vic is stood in the freezing cold is where we do have a lot of the more famous graves, as well as, from what I would gather, the important graves of or those who were important at the time. And again, these are names for another video, but you can see just how the headstones themselves have changed at this side of the churchyard compared to where we've just been where Henry Entwistle is. But just over here, this is perhaps the most famous grave of them all here at St Thomas's. And this is obviously the one of the Turner family. You've got William Turner Esquire on this side of Flaxmas House and it's a long, long story of the Turners and how they basically built up Helmshore to what it is today. And if I remember rightly, it was the Turners themselves that helped or instigated the building of St Thomas's back in 1850. So for sure, the Turners is a story we will be covering again at another point in time. So that is all from here at St Thomas's in Helmshore. But yeah, a very short tale, um, and it's just one we've come out to cover and pay our respects to Henry. Because like I said, it's such a bizarre way of, of dying and losing your life. And again, it opens up so many questions how that occurred. You know, how did this cast iron pot end up on his head? Was he robbed and did people put it on his head so they could make the escape? There was no sign of any forced entry or exit. There was no sign of any being smashed up or his house being trashed there was nothing to prove or to show that side of it so had Henry simply maybe did he have a heart attack did he have a fit did he slip and fall he was 66 years old at the end of the day now unfortunately we don't know his health conditions at that time he could have been frail on his legs he could have been suffering from arthritis or any other ailments we just don't know so it is a bizarre story it's a bizarre way in which Henry himself passed away if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, don't forget to give us a comment down below, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please don't forget to share this video as well as all the others, because we really do appreciate it. But in the meantime, I want you to take care, look after yourselves, and myself and Vicky will be back soon with another tale from a dark, but at times, glorious past. Take care, everyone, and remember to stay curious, 
and to stay safe.